people often ask which skincare ingredients I recommend the most to my patients. So today I'm going to share my go-tos, explain why, and give you some awesome product recommendations featuring those ingredients. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Dr. Sam Ellis, and I'm a board certified medical and cosmetic dermatologist in Northern California. I'm here to help you understand your skin and find products that work for you. So if that sounds good, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Even though this video is focusing on skincare ingredients, I think it's really important to remind everyone that a product is only as good as its overall formulation. It doesn't matter how good the ingredient is, if it's not balanced well and formulated in a way that's going to be safe and effective for the person using it. I kind of think of it like a recipe when you're cooking, you can look at the ingredients and be like, oh yeah, those are good ingredients. But if the whole recipe isn't structured well, you're not going to come out with something tasty. And the same thing goes for overall formulation. So although I'm gonna be focusing on the ingredients in this video, it's so important to keep in mind that the formula overall that it's incorporated into is what's ultimately going to determine how amazing it is for you. First up is retinaldehyde, also known as retinal, and this is part of the retinoid family that includes other vitamin A derived molecules such as retinol, retinol esters, and retinoic acid. When applied topically, retinoids increase the rate of cellular turnover and help prevent as well as correct signs of premature skin aging like fine lines, wrinkles, irregular pigmentation, dullness. And even though I have used and recommended all different types of retinoids, I'll tell you why I think retinaldehyde is such a standout among its fellow retinoid peers. When you apply retinaldehyde to the skin, it only needs to undergo one conversion step to become the active form of retinoid in the skin known as retinoic acid. When you compare that to retinol, which probably more people are familiar with because there are many, many products available that contain retinol, that needs to undergo two conversion steps to become retinoic acid or its active form in the skin. And although retinol is great, I've used it for many years, I recommend it a lot. Every time that it undergoes a conversion step, you lose a little bit of that active product. So when you take retinaldehyde, which only needs to undergo a single conversion step to reach that active form, you essentially have a more potent topical that's going to get you to your skin goals faster. And you may be wondering, well, why don't you just recommend retinoic acid, something like prescription tretinoin? And I do like tretinoin. I prescribe it all the time for acne and even for the treatment of photo aging. But the thing about retinoids in general is that they can be irritating to the skin. They can cause stinging, redness, flaking, and the closer to retinoic acid you get, the more irritation potential there is. And so the reason I like retinaldehyde is because it sits sort of in this Goldilocks spot of having more oomph than retinol, but being less irritating than retinoic acid. So if your skin tends to be a bit more sensitive or you've tried tretinoin and it's too irritating for you, or maybe you just don't have access to prescription retinoids, but you also want something that is more potent than a retinol, that's where retinaldehyde products come in. Now, the tricky thing about formulating products with retinaldehyde, and this is actually true of many retinol, is that retinaldehyde is very sensitive to light and air. And so brands need to take special precautions when producing and storing their retinaldehyde formulas in order to maintain their bioavailability, their stability, and to reduce the irritation potential of that product. One thing you'll also notice about retinaldehyde products is they tend to be yellow or orange or even maybe green in color because retinaldehyde itself is yellow. And so when you formulate with it, you can't create a white product. One of my all-time favorite retinaldehyde products is made by Medicaid. So Medicaid has this crystal retinal system. I don't know if system is really the right word, but essentially they have five different retinal potencies. So you can start at retinal one, which is 0.01% retinal. And then they have three, which is 0.03, retinal six, 0.06, 10, which is 0.1, and 20 now, which is 0.2% retinaldehyde. So if you're new to retinal, you can start at level one or three, and as you're able to go through an entire tube of that without irritation and you're liking the results, you can kind of level up progressively without risking some of the irritation that's very common when using retinoids. I should also mention, you don't need to go all the way up to crystal retinal 20 in order to get the amazing benefits of regular retinoid use. I much prefer consistency over potency, so if you need to stay at crystal retinol three or six, that is completely fine. You will still see amazing benefits for your skin. I also really love the Naturium Retinaldehyde Cream Serum. This comes in two potencies, 0.05% and 0.1%. When I compare the Naturium Retinaldehyde to the Medicaid Crystal Retinal, I find that the Naturium one is a bit more hydrating and feels a little bit slippier or almost silkier on the skin. So it's really texturally what you prefer in terms of picking one over the other. I think both are excellent. They both use really good systems to keep their retinaldehyde 
potent and effective and non-irritating. So I think both have done a great job with them. The next ingredient that I have to talk about and that I absolutely love as a dermatologist, and I think many derms out there will agree with me, is benzoyl peroxide. Benzoyl peroxide is one of our go-to acne fighting ingredients, and you can find it included in many prescription acne medications, but you can also find it in over-the-counter acne products. I love benzoyl peroxide because it fights acne in so many different ways, and I'm just a huge fan of a multitasking ingredient. It's anti-inflammatory, it destroys acne-causing bacteria, it's sebostatic, meaning that it reduces excess oil production, and it's a keratolytic, meaning that it breaks apart those sticky skin cells that tend to clog our pores and lead to comedones, also known as blackheads and whiteheads. When you look at products that are available over the counter that contain benzoyl peroxide, you may see a variety of strengths. It can be anywhere from 2.5% all the way up to 10%. My preference is for products that contain 5% or less because studies have shown that when you use higher strengths of benzoyl peroxide, you don't get added efficacy, but you can get added irritation. And that is something to keep in mind with benzoyl peroxide products is some people can be a bit sensitive to them and develop things like redness or stinging or itch or peeling. So if that's you, don't use benzoyl peroxide, but the vast majority of the population can tolerate benzoyl peroxide. And if someone has acne, it is the first thing I ask them to incorporate into their skincare routine. Probably the most common benzoyl peroxide product that I recommend in my own practice is the CeraVe Acne Foaming Cream Cleanser. This has 4% benzoyl peroxide and it's a really nice once a day wash to help fight acne. And benzoyl peroxide products don't just have to be used on the face. They're great for acne that's on the body, like on the chest or the back or the buttocks. Or if you struggle with bacterial folliculitis, benzoyl peroxide products can be really helpful for that too. When I'm having someone cleanse with a benzoyl peroxide wash, I usually ask them to lather it up and leave it on their skin for at least 60 seconds before rinsing it off. Another benzoyl peroxide product that I really like is the Neutrogena Stubborn AM Acne Treatment. This is a leave-on product. So instead of being a wash that you rinse off, you put this on as a cream and then you can layer your other skincare products on top of it. This contains 2.5% micronized benzoyl peroxide. So let's talk about the concentration first, 2.5% absolutely strong enough to be effective and exert all of those amazing positive anti-acne effects in the skin. And the fact that it's micronized means that the benzoyl peroxide particles are teeny tiny and can easily penetrate into the pore where the acne starts. Now, the key with this product is to not use it as a spot treatment. I feel like a lot of people buy this and they use it on their active pimples, but once an acne bump comes to the skin surface, it's kind of at the end of its life cycle. Anything you do to it at that point is not really going to expedite its resolution that much. The real value of benzoyl peroxide and really of all acne products is to prevent future acne from coming to the surface. So I typically recommend applying a thin layer of this to areas that someone tends to break out. So that might be on the cheeks, the nose, the forehead, and the chin. Usually we're sparing the areas around the nose and the eyes and the mouth just because those areas are more prone to irritation. And that is applied once a day, usually in the morning, followed by sunscreen. And over time, that's going to reduce the number of breakouts that someone has. The final thing I'll mention about benzoyl peroxide, I think this is very important to know if you're going to incorporate it into your skincare routine, is that it can bleach textiles like sheets, towels, clothing. So if you don't fully rinse it off, you're gonna be stuck with problems. So I recommend using either sheets or towels or pillowcases that you don't really care about when you first start incorporating benzoyl peroxide into your routine or just using all white everything. Next up on my list of favorite skincare ingredients is L-ascorbic acid, also known as vitamin C. Now there are many different forms of vitamin C that can be incorporated into topical skincare. I lean towards favoring L-ascorbic acid because it is the most studied form of vitamin C, meaning that when we look at the positive effects that vitamin C has in the skin, which I'll talk about in a second, it's L-ascorbic acid that has that proven efficacy. L-ascorbic acid is also the bioactive form of vitamin C in our skin. So it's the molecule that our body actually recognizes and utilizes. First and foremost, vitamin C is an antioxidant, meaning that it helps protect us against oxygen-free radicals. And oxygen-free radicals are sort of bad acting molecules that are generated in the skin from environmental exposures like pollution and UV radiation, as well as from our normal cellular metabolism. And vitamin C can go around in there as well as other antioxidants and sort of sop up those oxygen free radicals so that they don't exert damage. In addition to being an awesome antioxidant, vitamin C also increases synthesis of collagen decreases disruption of collagen and helps prevent hyperpigmentation. If you look at a product that contains L-ascorbic acid, oftentimes it will list on the bottle the concentration of L-ascorbic acid, and that can be anywhere from under 1% 
all the way up past 20%. And the interesting thing about L-ascorbic acid is that it has shown an ability to exert all of its positive effects at a very wide range of concentrations. The tricky thing about formulating products with L-ascorbic acid is that it can oxidize and perhaps become less effective when it's exposed to light or air or water. So you really have to do a good job when you formulate and when you package it to ensure that it remains effective, not just in the factory, but when it goes out to the consumer and for the duration that they're going to use that product, which is usually over a few months. Probably the most popular popular L-ascorbic acid or topical antioxidant product of all time is the SkinCeutical CE Ferulic. Earlier, when I referred to the clinical studies that prove L-ascorbic acid's efficacy, it was actually done on this specific patented formula. This contains 15% L-ascorbic acid, as well as vitamin E and ferulic acid, which are other antioxidants that help keep that L-ascorbic acid stable and effective. I have been using this topical antioxidant for years. For a long time, there really weren't any dupes or competitors. And because of that instability of L-ascorbic acid, I was always a little nervous about using a different product that wasn't using that exact patented formula, but SkinCeuticals has just increased the price of this yet again. So I think it used to be in like the 160s. It's now $182 in the US, which is steep. And I feel like that is a big ask for most people. I still think it's an awesome product. It's still in my skincare cabinet. I still use it, but it is expensive. The closest dupe I found to the SkinCeuticals formula is the Maylove Glow Maker. This is like 30 something dollars. So way more affordable. And I know a lot of you use it and love it. I've tried it as well. I think it's a really nice alternative. I actually like this formula a little bit better for people who have oily skin because it's not quite as heavy or oily feeling as the SkinCeuticals CE Ferulic. The other thing I noticed about this product though is that it oxidized maybe a few weeks earlier than my SkinCeuticals does. And that's not like a huge deal because I feel like you should go through your topical antioxidants within a few months of use anyway, but it's just a point of difference. The reason I think it's so important to find an affordable antioxidant, and don't get me wrong, affordable is very relative. SkinCeuticals is an affordable antioxidant for some part of the population is because as I've aged, I've kind of realized that I wanna be applying my topical antioxidant to more than just my face. I wanna protect my neck and my decollete and my hands and my forearms, other areas that get exposed to the sun and seem to be aging a lot faster than the rest of my skin. And so having affordable options that I can apply more liberally is really important to me. Next up on my list of favorite skincare ingredients is azelaic acid. And if you've watched any of my videos on rosacea or my personal rosacea journey, you probably knew I was going to mention this. So azelaic acid is what's known as a dicarboxylic acid. It's different from an alpha hydroxy acid or a beta hydroxy acid, which most people are more familiar with. This is a much milder acid. It's incredibly versatile. And I explain it to my patients sort of as a skin balancing ingredient. I also really love it because it's suitable for all skin types and tones. Azelaic acid inhibits tyrosinase, which is the enzyme in the skin that leads to pigment production. So it's very helpful with things like hyperpigmentation. This is also an antioxidant and antimicrobial. So it's great for skin conditions like acne and rosacea. And it not only helps with the pimple or bumps associated with those conditions, but it can also help reduce redness. Azelaic acid is also considered safe in pregnancy. And I remember when I was pregnant, I was looking for all the azelaic acid products. And honestly, I tried a lot of bad ones. It's very tricky to formulate with, but it's also one of the most common prescription medications that dermatologists will give pregnant women who are struggling with acne or rosacea. My go-to azelaic acid is Phenacea, which in the United States is a prescription of 15% azelaic acid. You can also get prescription azelaic acid through online dermatologic services like Apostrophe, for example. One of my favorite non-prescription azelaic acid products is the Glytone Enhanced Brightening Complex. I've definitely talked about this on my YouTube channel before. I like this because it has azelaic acid and and glycolic acid. The azelaic acid is working on soothing and hyperpigmentation and kind of cleaning out the pores. And then you also have the glycolic acid that has this brightening and exfoliating aspect to it. And together they are chef's kiss. Another skincare ingredient that I want to give a little love to is sulfur. Now, sulfur is not sexy. We often associate it with the smell of rotten eggs, but it can really work wonders on the skin. Sulfur is a natural element. I mean, it sits on the periodic table. And the reason I really like it is because it's so versatile. And as you're probably realizing, a theme of this video is that I like versatile ingredients. Sulfur helps reduce sebum production, so it can help if your skin is oily. It's also a keratolytic, so it can break apart those sticky skin cells and unclog your pores. And it's also anti-inflammatory, antibacterial, antifungal. I mean, 
it really does a lot of important things that help keep the skin healthy. It's used off-label to treat a variety of skin conditions, including acne, rosacea, seborrheic dermatitis, psoriasis, eczema. So for people who don't respond to traditional treatments or for people who have really sensitive skin, or for people who are pregnant, because this is safe in pregnancy, sulfur is a really nice option. Its main side effect is dryness, which in turn can lead to irritation. But for my oily people out there, sulfur is like so undervalued. Also, not all sulfur products need to smell horrible. You can stabilize it and use it in the optimal pH range and really reduce that egg scent that most of us are not a big fan of. One of my favorite sulfur products is the Joseph Anti-Acne Soap. I really like this because I have a subset of patients who want really natural products or products derived from the earth or from plants. And those aren't always my favorite type of products, but I feel like I can really stand by this soap. You use it in the shower. It helps with things like acne and rosacea. It can help with body odor. And it's just a great overall body soap. It takes forever to go through a bar of this. And it's also really nice for people who are really oily. Because of its antifungal properties, I will also ask my patients who deal with foot fungus or toenail fungus to use this soap in the shower to wash their feet and particularly between their toes. And Another sulfur product that I really like, it's probably a little bit more cosmetically elegant than the Joseph soap, is the Kate Somerville Eradicate Daily Cleanser. This has 3% sulfur, which is a solid concentration of sulfur that can help reduce things like blackheads and whiteheads, and again, address that oiliness that a lot of people struggle with. Next up, we have to talk about glycerin. This skincare ingredient is finally getting its time in the spotlight that it deserves. At its core, glycerin is a humectant. It's hygroscopic, meaning that it draws water from the air into the top layers of the skin. This helps with things like skin hydration, it makes the skin appear more plump, and it can help with skin elasticity. I feel like if you look at the ingredient list of a lot of products, you see glycerin on there. And for a long time, it wasn't getting called out as anything special, even though it really is. Glycerin can be effective at a wide range of concentrations, but in concentrations over 20%, it's actually considered a skincare active. One thing that's a little bit tricky about glycerin is that when you get into high concentrations, like 20% and above, it can feel really sticky or tacky. And for some people, that type of texture is not going to bother them. But for some people, it's going to be enough of an ick factor that it will make them not use the product. It's probably why I prefer high concentrations of glycerin in wash off products like cleansers, for example, because you don't really appreciate that stickiness or tackiness because it's rinsed off the skin. The other reason I really like glycerin in a cleanser is because glycerin almost acts as a skin protectant. It essentially prevents the surfactant, which is the part of the cleanser that removes dirt and oil from overreacting with your skin and stripping its natural fats and lipids away. That's why if you use a well-formulated cleanser with a high concentration concentration of glycerin, you'll notice that your skin feels very clean afterward, but you don't have that stripped or depleted feel. A leave-on glycerin product that I really enjoy is the Aveeno Calm and Restore Triple Oat Serum. This to me is just a really nice, gentle, hydrating serum. I would use it in lieu of a traditional hyaluronic acid serum, and it's great for bringing that extra moisture to the skin. For people who have oily skin, I think this can be used instead of a moisturizer in the morning, and you would follow it with your sunscreen. And for people who are super dry and feel like they want an extra hydration, hydration step before they put on moisturizer, you could use this as well. Now let me compare that Aveeno formula to the Experiment Super Saturated Barrier Support Serum. This serum is 30% glycerin. And when you get into concentrations of glycerin that high, glycerin takes on this additional ability to act as a skin barrier protectant. Now, when you pump this out of the container, it's a bit sticky. It's giving snail mucin vibes if you've ever used a product with snail mucin before. But if you can tolerate and accept that texture, this really does pull a lot of water to the skin and make the skin look so plump and hydrated and juicy. If you're struggling with the appearance of like just little fine lines on the skin, or you just feel like, man, my skin always looks so dry and you don't want to use an exfoliant or maybe you're already using an exfoliant or a retinoid in your routine, maybe think about putting on this serum. See how it layers with your moisturizer and under your sunscreen and see if it gives you that extra plumpness and suppleness to your skin that you're craving. And the final glycerin rich product that I could not do this video without mentioning because it's one of my all time favorite products is the Naturium Glow Getter Body Wash. This is formulated with 50% glycerin and then it also has some really beautiful plant oils in there. It's just such a beautiful body wash. It is plushy. It removes all the gunk on your skin without stripping it or making it feel depleted. Your skin feels great afterward. It feels hydrated without having a film on it. It's just an exceptional body wash. And if you haven't tried it already, you should. I also use it as like a shave gel. It's just 
fabulous. And I always run out of it every time I buy it because my husband uses it too. Okay, the next skincare ingredient that I love is petrolatum, probably more commonly known as petroleum jelly or PJ. Just kidding, no one calls it PJ. Petrolatum falls into the skincare category of occlusive, meaning that it traps water in the skin or prevents something called trans epidermal water loss. And it is the gold standard of occlusives. All the other occlusives out there look up in awe at petroleum jelly. I feel like one of the bigger hangups people have about using products that contain petrolatum is that they think of it as a byproduct of the fossil fuel industry and they associate petrolatum with contamination and carcinogenesis. But it's not just any old petrolatum that's being included in skincare products. This is pure petrolatum. It's USP grade and it meets FDA standards for both processing and its purity. The petrolatum used in skincare is highly refined and purified to remove any potential problematic contaminants. Petrolatum is so effective at keeping the skin barrier protected and preventing excess water loss that it's probably the only skincare ingredient that we also recommend as a product on its own, and that is Vaseline. So original Vaseline is 100% pure petroleum jelly, and it is triple purified. It is probably something I recommend in my clinic every single day and for a variety of skin issues. I love it for cuts and scrapes. I love it for taking care of post-operative wounds and keeping the stitches nice and hydrated so that when I go to remove the stitches, they slip right out of the skin. I really like it to be used on the lips if people have sensitive lips and can't tolerate other lip products. It's great to mix into moisturizer if you feel like you need a little more occlusive oomph from your products. I mean, it just does so many things so well. Another petrolatum-based product that I absolutely love and I feel like it was genius for Aquaphor to come out with this is the Aquaphor body spray. So this is basically an ointment spray. And the tricky thing about ointments is that they are really thick and they're not the most desirable greasy texture, but when you refine it into a little sprayed mist, like Aquaphor has so expertly done, it's a really nice way to apply something that is very skin protective, that is very nourishing without a sticky mess. I particularly love this product for my patients with eczema or atopic dermatitis who struggle with moisturizing their skin. Sometimes just dipping their hand into cold moisturizer, especially if they're a kid, is super unappealing. So being able to incorporate a really helpful product into a spray application, which is a little more fun and playful and honestly just easy is awesome. And the final skincare ingredient I wanted to include in this video is urea. So urea is a molecule that's naturally produced by your body. The skin makes something called natural moisturizing factor, which helps keep your skin barrier protected and intact. And urea is part of that. Urea is also pretty neat because it's considered a humectant, something that draws water to the skin surface, as well as an emollient, something that smooths the skin surface. And the interesting thing about urea is depending on the concentration of urea included in a product, it acts differently. So when you're working with urea concentrations of 10% or below, urea really works as an amazing moisturizer and something that brings water to the skin surface. At that 10% concentration, it also acts as a very mild or gentle keratolytic, so something that can help break apart the dead flaky skin cells and really smooth out the surface of skin. When you get into products that have 20 to 30% urea, one, urea can help with itching, and two, you get a much stronger keratolytic effect. So a very strong smoothing effect and also its ability to really break down thicker scale. And at 40%, urea becomes proteolytic, meaning that it can break down proteins in the skin. And really 40% concentrations are only used for treating things like very thick heel skin or to address very thick toenails that are difficult to cut because it can make them a little thinner and a little bit softer. Urea can also enhance the absorption of other skincare ingredients. So depending on how it's formulated and what else it's formulated with, it can make other things work better. One product I really like that has urea in it is the Eucerin Urea Repair Body Wash. This has 5% urea, and also it actually has a high percent of glycerin, which I know I already talked about, but this is a great body wash for just that very mild keratolytic effect, so that smoothing effect, but it's also going to be very nourishing and moisturizing and help draw water to the skin surface. I really like this body wash for people who really struggle with dry, flaky skin, particularly on the arms and legs. A lot of my patients who struggle with other conditions like diabetes that can be associated associated with dry flaky skin on the legs would really benefit from a body wash like this that not only cleanses their skin, but also has this very mild keratolytic effect to remove that dry flaky skin, smooth the skin and draw moisture to the surface. Another common recommendation for a urea product that I give in my practice is the Pure Sources Urea Foot Cream. This is 40% urea. So for people who have super thick, dry cracked heels, this stuff is great. It's kind of like a thick white 
paste. So it's not the most cosmetically elegant product, but it's very effective. Also for people who have foot fungus or toenail fungus, where they have really thick overgrown toenails that are difficult to cut, applying urea regularly to the toenails can soften them up and make them easier to trim and care for. Well, I think that's a wrap on some of my all-time favorite skincare ingredients. What are your go-to skincare ingredients? Or do you have a product that you love that incorporates one of the skincare ingredients that I mentioned? Please let me know in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Maybe tell a friend and I'll catch you next time. Thank you.